like I want to make a song. I want to do a, a, a video about scary st stories because I like my voice. Okay. Carol. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Two years ago, my... Okay, first, let me tell everybody now that my brain had surgery last year, so... I thought I was about to say this word. I was going to say that. No. Here, I'll do it again. Two years ago, my significant other and I found the perfect place to rent. It was a small tract of fabricated homes. The neighborhood was nice. It was quiet, which for two college seniors wanting out of the noisy dorms was heaven. Now, because this was Arizona and it was prefab houses, most of the folks that lived in our neighborhood were 60 or older, save a few. To our left, uh, Sandra and David, an awesome couple in their early 60s, both retired postal workers. They spend summers in Maine and winters here. To our right, Carol, a uh, 40-something who supposedly owned her own home business. She looked like she perpetually was sucking a lemon and was just and she was just off. At first she would occasionally join my SO for a smoke on the porch or if we barbecued with Dave or Sandy, we would invite her over. To say she was awkward was putting it lightly. We suspected maybe she was on the spectrum. We would be eating and she would describe how her mother died a slow, agonizing death when a tumor in her throat burst. Or there was the time where she described in great detail her latest yeast infection. I kid you not. Sometimes I would work out on our porch. I had a small bench with a bar and some weights. <clears throat> <coughs> One day I'm lifting when I almost dropped the bar on my neck. Leaning over me was Carol. I could have snapped your neck like a twig, she mumbled. I sat up. Pardon? I asked. I said you could have really hurt yourself, she said. I doubted what I had heard chalking it up to not hearing her correctly, but she had this smirk on her face. After that, I tried my best to ignore her. However, I had not told my SO my suspicions that maybe old Carol was a bit fucking insane. I come home from class one evening and my SO and Carol are on the porch. I went inside because I was coming down with something and just wanted to go to bed. My SO comes in and tells me she is going to her job. She worked night as a dispatcher for the campus police. I am out of it, so she kisses me goodnight, says she will lock up the house, and will see me in the morning. Around 1 a.m., I wake up covered in sweat. I go to get a glass of water and drink it down. I see my SO, or who I assume is my SO, on the couch. I am so out of it that I crawl back into bed and fall asleep. The next morning, I wake up, and my SO comes in the doors, telling me that work was crazy. Wait, you weren't at work? You were here. She looks at me funny. I get a sick feeling in my gut. Fever or no fever, I know I saw someone on the couch. My SO writes it off as a fever dream. The house was locked up. I forget about it. Life goes on. Graduation is approaching. Things with my side of the family, well, specifically my egg donor, go badly. 
long story, Esso is offered a job back in her home state of New York City. So we give notice to our landlord. We let Sandy and Dave know. And one night we tell Carol. She blinks at us, then gets up and heads over to her house, not saying a word. We just brush it off as weird Carol. That night, we are asleep when I hear creaking coming from the living living area. I sit up. Now, Esso hears it. She grabs my arm. I grab the metal bat under my wet bed. Who is there? I ask. Whack! The door thuds. Thank God it's locked. My Esso dials 911. Meanwhile, I am watching as someone is recreating the door scene from The Shining. Except whomever was doing it was using a small hatchet. They still were making progress on the door as it was pretty much hollow. The six minutes it took for the police to get there felt like a lifetime. I can now see the hatchet's tip in the door. Suddenly, we hear the cops tell someone to put their weapon down. I had no idea who it was until we were let out of our place. On the couch in cuffs is Carol. We learned after that she had been in and out of jail. Supposedly, she went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs from long-term use of meth. She was arrested and charged with breaking and entering and destruction of property. They tried to get her on attempted assault, but she made a plea deal that included some kind of psychiatric treatment. I never could prove she was in my place that day I was sick, but I'm sure it was her. As we were moving, I was messing around with our storage space. Really, a crawl space under the home. We had never used it. Curious, I crawled around underneath the house and saw if you kicked hard enough, you could get the screen that led to the outside of to the outside easily. Who knows how many times she might have been in our place or under the house listening to us. We still keep in touch with Sandy and Dave. The unit Carol rented was sold. They haven't seen her since she was carted off to jail. Thankfully, we are thousands of miles away and never have to see her again.